Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa, and I'm here to share a few devotionals with all of you. The first one is titled, Abiding Presence of Christ. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. John 8, verse 36. The religion of Christ means more than the forgiveness of sin. It means taking away our sins and filling the vacuum with the graces of the Holy Spirit. It means divine illumination, rejoicing in God. It means a heart emptied of self and blessed with the abiding presence of Christ. When Christ reigns in the soul, there is purity, freedom from sin, the glory, the fullness, the completeness of the gospel plan is fulfilled in the life. The acceptance of the Savior brings a glow of perfect peace, perfect love, perfect assurance. The beauty and fragrance of the character of Christ revealed in the life testifies that God has indeed sent his Son into the world to be its Savior. To his faithful followers, Christ has been a daily companion and familiar friend. They have lived in close contact, in constant communion with God. Upon them the glory of the Lord has risen. In them the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ has been reflected. Now they rejoice in the undimmed rays of of the brightness and glory of the King in His majesty. They are prepared for the communion of heaven, for they have heaven in their hearts. And that is the end of the first one. And the second one is titled, Self-Denial. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Philippians 2 verses 5 through 7. Jesus emptied himself, and in all that he did, self did not appear. He subordinated all things to the will of his Father, when his mission on earth was about to close, he could say, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And he bids us learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Let self be dethroned and no longer hold the supremacy of the soul. He who beholds Christ in his self-denial, his lowliness of heart, will be constrained to say, as did Daniel when he beheld one like the sons of men, my comeliness was turned in me into corruption. Human nature is ever struggling for expression, ready for contest, but he who learns of Christ is emptied of self, of pride, of love, of supremacy, and there is silence in the soul. Self is yielded to the disposal of the Holy Spirit. Then we are not anxious to have the highest place. We have no ambition to crowd and elbow ourselves into notice, but we feel that our highest place is at the feet of our Savior. We look to Jesus, waiting for his hand to lead, listening for his voice to guide. The Apostle Paul had this experience, and he said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And that is the end of the second one. And the last one I'd like to share with you is titled, To Be Content. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Sipporah, his daughter, 
Exodus 2, verse 21. The great anxiety of men and women of today is to be held in high esteem by the lordly ones of earth. The religion of Jesus seems to be considered of no special value, and the children of men have set their hearts to seek pleasure rather than to know the will of God. The attainment of wealth is considered by many sufficient reason for sacrificing their hope of heaven. But Moses had been instructed in regard to the final reward to be given to the humble and obedient servants of God and worldly gain sank to its proper insignificance in comparison. The magnificent palace of Pharaoh and the monarch's throne were held out as an inducement to Moses, but he knew that the sinful pleasures that make men forget God were in its lordly courts. He looked beyond that gorgeous palace, beyond a monarch's crown, to the high honors that will be bestowed on the saints of the Most High God in a kingdom untainted by sin. He saw by faith an imperishable crown that Christ would place on the brow of the overcomer. This faith led him to turn away from the lordly ones of earth and join the humble, poor, despised nation who had chosen to obey God rather than to serve sin. Moses felt that it would pay to make this great sacrifice for the right, to be on the side of God and the loyal angels, and to enjoy the eternal reward at last. Even in this life it brought, it brought him peace and blessing, and in contemplation of the certain riches of eternity, his sacrifice seemed a trivial one. Moses was a man of like passions with ourselves, and his character is described that we may learn lessons from his noble example. What God did for Moses, he will do for us, if we are as faithful, and we have not only the same God to go to, the same mediator to intercede for us, but the same mighty incentives of love to urge us to be obedient to all God's requirements. We have clearer light and the examples of those who sinned. Their crimes are plainly stated and their punishments depicted. The con commendation of God is for the obedient today as then. For God is no respecter of persons, and whoever worketh righteousness is accepted of him in every nation. But if we lack in character, in meekness, in humility, in faith in placing a true estimate upon the eternal riches, and in willingness to suffer reproach for the truth's sake, we shall be left without excuse. Christ has presented before us the greatest inducement that could be offered to mortals. It is not only the gift of eternal life and everlasting joy, but a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory in the kingdom of God. Those who feel the importance of taking God's word as the rule of their life and conduct will have respect unto the recompense of reward. And that is the end of these devotionals. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you, and I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.